Hello, and welcome to the scatter plots lesson of our data visualization course. Scatter plots, which are sometimes known as bivariate plots, allow us to visualize the relationship between two numerical variables. We can also make the trends and relationships in our scatter plot more clear by overlaying a trend line or a smoothing line on top of the points. We'll be doing all of this and more with the ggplot2 package in R. So let's get started. Here are our learning objectives for today. You can pause here to read them if you'd like, but I will go through them in more detail at the end of the lesson to make sure we've achieved these outcomes. First, let's load in the packages that we're going to need in this lesson. The first package we're going to load in is the tidyverse. Tidyverse is a meta package, which means when we load this in, it will also load in a set of core packages, including ggplot2, which is the main package for data visualization that we'll be using in this lesson and in this course. The second and final package we're going to load is called here. The here package simply helps us more easily and accurately reference files that we want to load in. Run this chunk to load these packages into your R session, and now we're ready to go. Let's look at the data set that we will be using to plot in this lesson. The data we will be using for plotting today comes from a prospective observational study of acute diarrhea in children aged 0 to 59 months. These data were collected from Mali and Bangladesh and analyzed in this study. However, for today, we'll just be looking at the results from Mali. Now let's load in our data set and look at the variables. We can see that the data has 150 rows and each row corresponds to one patient that was surveyed. We're going to begin by visualizing the relationship between age in months on the x-axis and viral load on the y-axis. In ggplot terms, we're going to map the age variable to the x-aesthetic and map the viral load variable to the y-aesthetic. Keep in mind the template that we used in previous lessons in order to see the minimum arguments and functions required to build a ggplot. First, I will just initialize the plot with ggplot, then add the data argument. When you add mapping equals AES, don't forget to close the brackets at the end. Here we'll put in our x and y variables. Finally, we add a plus sign and start a new line to add the third and last geometric layer. which is geom point for a scatter plot. Run these few lines of code and you'll produce the scatter plot that is shown over here. This tells us that perhaps viral load decreases with age. Later on, when we look at it more closely and add a trend line, we'll get further insights into this plot, but this is the base plot that we'll be adapting throughout the lesson. And now it's your turn to do a practice question. If you haven't done a TGC course yet or used the practice question functions, I'll quickly run through that with you. First, in this section, you'll write code to create the plot that this question is asking for. Here, we'd like you to use the MOLLYDD data frame to create a scatter plot of age versus height. 
8 on the x-axis and height on the y-axis. Please pause the video now and work on the practice question in your RMD. Good luck and see you in a bit. Now let's modify the aesthetics of our points. As a reminder, aesthetics in ggplot refer to the visual properties of the geometric objects in your plot. There are two kinds of aesthetics that we change in ggplot. First of all, we can map information about our data onto aesthetics of a plot. You can color points according to values of a specific variable. The other way is by setting fixed aesthetics of our plot. This goes as a direct argument in our geometric function and doesn't represent any data. First, we're going to map variables to aesthetics in our plot. Before, we had the x and y aesthetics inside AES. Now we will add color. This will allow us to visualize a third variable on our two-dimensional scatter plot. This is the code we use to create the original scatter plot. So now let's map the patient's height measured by the variable height cm onto the color of our points. So when we want to map an aesthetic, we add it inside the AES function. Usually what we've done is to add a comma after x and y and add the color aesthetic within the AES function connected to ggplot instead. code works for what we're trying to do. It gives us a plot where the colors are scaled according to the height cm variable. However, this time we're not going to keep our color aesthetic in the ggplot function along with x and y. That's because the aesthetic mappings that we specify in the ggplot function, the main function, are inherited by the subsequent geom functions. But if we want to add, say, another geometric layer, as we will later on for a trend line, we don't want this color mapping to be inherited by the trend line as well. We just want the color mapping to apply to the points. So instead of adding color here in the ggplot function, we're going to move it down to geom point. But we can't just put it directly into geom point, we need to add it as an aesthetic mapping. So what we're going to do is add mapping equals AES again in the geom point function. So now I've removed the color equals height cm from ggplot and I'm going to add mapping to geom point. Now you can see that mapping appears within geom point and color equals height cm. We get the same plot, but it matters that the color mapping belongs to the geom point layer and not the main aesthetic mappings in ggplot. When we assign a continuous variable to the color aesthetic, what we get is a color gradient scaled by the values of that continuous variable. ggplot has already scaled the colors to match the values of height cm. The points here are different shades of the same blue hue, with darker colors representing smaller numbers. So what we're seeing here is with lower age, you have lower height, and as age increases and viral load decreases, the points get lighter, which means children who are older are taller and height increases with age, as we might expect. Now, instead of mapping a continuous variable like height, we can also map a categorical or binary variable like the breastfeeding variable in the MollyDD data frame. This variable has two values, zero and one. One represents that yes, the child is being breastfed, and zero is no, the child is not being breastfed. So this time, instead of height, we have 
breastfeeding in the geome point mapping aesthetic for color. Run this code and see what we get. Here we get the same gradual color scaling across the color gradient that we saw with the height cm variable, which is a continuous variable. This communicates that there is a continuum of values in the breastfeeding variable, but this is not true. The breastfeeding variable has two distinct discrete possibilities, 0 or 1. But why does ggplot scale it as a continuum? This is because of the data class of the breastfeeding variable in the MOLLYDD data frame. We can ask the class function what R thinks the breastfeeding variable is. It tells us that the data class of this variable is numeric, which is true, it is made up of ones and zeros. However, even though it's a numeric variable, it has two discrete values, so continuous color scaling that we saw before is not ideal for this plot. In cases like this, we use the factor function to tell ggplot to treat a variable as a factor. So we start off with the same code as we wrote before, adding a mapping argument inside geom point and assigning color to breastfeeding, but this time we'll wrap the variable with the factor function. Now when you run this code, we will get a different result. When the variable is treated as a factor, each value of the variable 0 and 1 is given a unique color that are clearly distinguishable from each other. We can see that the orange points belong to 0, which means the children are not breastfed, and the blue points belong to 1, which means they are. Now it's time for another practice question. This time we want you to use the MOLLYDD data frame again to show the relationship between age and viral load as we've been doing. This time, map a third variable, frequency of respiration, which is a continuous variable, to color, the same way we did with height. And the second part of this question is to plot the age versus height scatter plot that we did earlier and map the variable fever to the color of the points. Remember that this mapping doesn't go inside the main ggplot function, it goes inside geom point, and fever, like breastfeeding, is a binary variable made of zeros and ones, so make sure that ggplot treats it like a factor. Good luck with this practice question, work on it on the RMD, pause this video, and come back when you're done. Welcome back, and I hope you had no trouble mapping these aesthetic variables to color of our points. Now we're moving on from mapping aesthetics to setting fixed aesthetics. Aesthetic arguments that are set to a fixed value remain static and don't vary depending on the data. This means they go outside the AES function and directly to the geom function corresponding to the layer that we want to apply the aesthetic argument to. In this section, we'll be adding the following fixed aesthetics to geom point. Color, which changes the point color or the point outline if you have a fillable point, which we'll see later. We've used this fixed aesthetic already. Something new is size, where we get to change the point's size in order to make it more readable. Alpha, which is not as intuitive as color or size, controls the opacity of points. The alpha aesthetic controls the opacity of our points. We can make them a little more transparent 
if we'd like to see where points overlap. We can also change the point shape. The default are these solid black circles, but we can also use triangles, squares, and a number of other shapes that ggplot offers. And finally, we will also edit the fill of our points. For points that have an outline and an interior, color changes the border of the points, and fill changes the interior color of the points. First, we'll be addressing color, size, and alpha. So let's change the color of our points to a fixed value by adding the color aesthetic directly within Geom Point. Here's the code of our original scatter plot with no color mappings, and now we'll add color equals whatever color we want directly in Geom Point without using mapping equals AES. In this case, we want our points to be steel blue, and there is an R color called steel blue. You need to put it in quotes so that R recognizes it as a color. After running this code, you'll see the same scatter plot we had before, but instead of having solid black points, we have blue points that are uniformly the same color and not data dependent. Now in addition to color, let's do size. In the same way that we did with color, we'll add size directly here in Geom Point. Size is measured in millimeters in ggplot and the default is one. Let's say we want slightly bigger points, so we'll increase size to two millimeters. After running this code, you'll see that again, we get a very similar scatter plot with larger points. However, in some places, the points are crowded and the larger size makes them overlap a little more. So in that case, we might want to change the transparency or the opacity of these points. We do this by adding the alpha aesthetic. Alpha ranges from zero, which is completely transparent, to one, which is completely opaque and one is the default that ggplot has been using this whole time. So to make our points a little more see-through, we're gonna reduce the opacity. By setting alpha equals to 0.75, we're saying that we want our points to be 75% opaque, which means 25% transparency. This code will give us this pretty plot. Making the points a little transparent makes it easier to see where the points overlap and how many points are overlapping in that area. Now it's time for a practice question for you. This time we'd like you to create the same scatter plot as the previous example of age versus viral load, but this time add a few fixed aesthetics to the plot. Change the color to cornflower blue, the size to three millimeters, and set the opacity at 60%. Good luck with this practice question, and I'll see you when you're done. Feel free to pause the video and work in the RMD. In this next section, we'll be using shape and fill as fixed aesthetics for scatter plots. Another way to change the appearance of our points is to change their shape. We do this by adding the shape aesthetic and setting it equal to a number corresponding to our desired shape. ggplot will accept the numbers 1 through 24 as values for the shape argument and they correspond to these shapes. So use this figure as a reference when you want to decide what shape to change your points to. Note that some of the points here are filled in with red. This indicates that the geometric objects or shapes 21 through 24 can accept both the color and the fill aesthetics because they have an interior and an exterior border. 
First, let's change the shape of the points in our original scatter plot here to a shape that can be filled in. So again, we set shape directly within geom point, and here we're going to choose shape number 21. which corresponds to this fillable circle. The points here are quite small, but you can see that they are empty circles, so they're hollow with just an outline and no color filled in. Changing the color aesthetic will change that outline color of the points. So here we're going to add color and set it to cyan 4. Now just the outline color of the points has changed to a cyan color and we can fill them in if we wish with the fill argument. After running that code, the resulting plot looks like this. You can tell that the outline and the fill colors are slightly different. We can further improve the readability of the plot that we saw before by increasing size and reducing opacity like we did before. So here I'm going to add the size and alpha aesthetics. This is our final enhanced scatter plot showing the same data as just a two dimensional age versus viral load, but it looks a little more presentable and a little more attractive. We noted before that viral load seems to decrease as age increases, but sometimes it can be hard to view relationships or trends with just points alone. In this case, we often wish to add a trend line to a scatter plot to make that relationship stand out more clearly. So we can take our original scatter plot and apply a smoothing line, also known as a trend line or best fit line. We can do this by adding another geometric function on another layer called geom smooth. To add another layer, we write the plus sign and start on a new line. And then we simply add the geom smooth function. When you run this code, you'll see that we get our original scatter plot of plane points with a trend line plotted over it. The smoothing layer is literally put on top of the points. Note here that some of the points are hidden by the blue line. This is because of the order that we put geometric layers in ggplot. The ones that come later get layered on top of the ones that come before. If you swap those, then the points would appear above the line. But we want our line to be on top, so we're going to keep it this way. This little message at the top of the plot tells us that the default smoothing function that's being used to plot this line is LOAS. LOAS stands for Locally Weighted Scatter Plot Smoothing. It is a function used by many statistical softwares in order to plot a trend line for a scatter plot. Now let's change the smoothing function being used. We can do that by adding the method argument inside geom smooth. We can set this to one of a number of options provided by geom smooth, including a generalized linear model. We add this as a character string. setting method equals GLM. This gives us a straight trend line going through the points. You may have noticed in the last two plots, the trend line has these gray bands around it. By default, ggplot2 shows us the 95% confidence limits around the trend line. You can take away those confident bands by adding SE equals false 
into Geom Smooth. So let's do this. Now we have the same plot again, but the confidence spans are no longer there. In addition to method, we can also change the other normal aesthetics that we've used for other geometric layers, such as color. The default color that we saw in the past plots was blue. Here we'll change it to dark red. Note that this is what I meant before by saying that we don't want to put the aesthetic mapping for color inside ggplot because that would have been inherited by both of these geometric functions. We just wanted to map a variable to geom point earlier, so we added the mapping equals AES separately within geom point. And here we've chosen a method, taken away the confidence interval bands, and changed the color. This linear regression agrees with what we initially noted at the beginning of this lesson, that there is a negative relationship between age and viral load. As age increases, viral load is decreasing. Now we can add a third variable from this plot. We're going to add another binary variable called vomit from the MollyDB data frame. This binary variable shows us whether the patient had vomited or not, a zero represents no, they didn't, and a one says yes, they did. So we're gonna map this variable to the color aesthetic of our points. So this time we're mapping a variable, so it does go inside mapping equals AES. And as I said before, we don't want it to affect geom smooth, just geom point. So we add mapping equals AES only within the geom point layer. And within mapping equals AES, we set the color aesthetic equal to vomit. But remember, this binary variable, similar to the variables that we used before, is going to be treated as numeric by ggplot, and it would have a continuous color scaling. We don't want this to happen, so we put the factor function around that variable. Running this code, the points are now colored with orange corresponding to zero, no vomiting, and blue corresponding to one. Yes, the child was vomiting. Let's go one step further and also change the arguments in the geom smooth function. Let's try a new method. We're going to change the method from GLM to GAM, which stands for General Additive Model. We are going to keep the confidence bands this time. change the color to dark gray. And we can increase the width of the line by adding the size argument. And now the resulting plot looks like this. We've modified the aesthetics of our points by mapping a variable onto it and changing the color and size of the trend line. So what does this plot tell us? Observe where the blue points are distributed compared to the orange points. The orange points are children who did not vomit and the blue points are children who did. You'll see that most of the blue points fall above the trend line and most of the orange points fall below. This tells us that with higher viral load, children were more likely to have vomited. This also makes intuitive sense that the more infected you are, the more severe your symptoms are going to be. Now it's time for you to practice setting fixed aesthetics and adding trend lines. There are two practice questions in this section. 
First, we'd like you to create a scatter plot of age versus height as you've done before and change a bunch of fixed aesthetics in this scatter plot. You'll be asked to change the color, size, and opacity of the points, as well as changing the method and the color of the trend line. Secondly, secondly, you're gonna recreate the plot that you just made in the previous practice question, but instead of setting color to a fixed aesthetic argument, you're going to be mapping a continuous variable onto the points of your scatter plot. We also want you to change the shape of your scatter plot to tilted rectangles, which is shape number 23. Good luck with these two practice questions. Please pause the video here, work on them in your RMD, and come back after you're done. Welcome back. We're now going to wrap up this lesson and review the learning objectives that we had set at the beginning to make sure that we've achieved them. Let's review the learning objectives that we set at the beginning of this lesson to make sure that we've achieved all of them. First of all, you're able to create a scatter plot with ggplot2 to visualize the relationship between two numerical variables. You're also able to map a third variable to a two-dimensional scatter plot with the color argument, and you've learned how to use both continuous and discrete variables to map to color. We also learned how to set a bunch of fixed aesthetics, such as color, fill, opacity, size, and shape. And finally, you're able to add and modify a trend line to your scatter plot using Geome Smooth to summarize the relationship between the variables that you're seeing in the scatter plot. I hope you enjoyed this lesson and feel comfortable creating scatter plots in R with ggplot2. With medium to large data sets or with data sets that have a lot of variables like the MarleyDD data frame that we use today, it is useful to play around with the different modifications to a scatter plot. Today, we added trend lines, mapped additional variables onto the plot, and changed fixed aesthetics like transparency, size, shape, etc. to improve the readability of our plot. We'll be soon covering how to create line graphs, add labels, use themes, facet our plots, create bubble charts, and even animate our plots and make them interactive. Thanks for watching this video and see you next time. For more resources, visit our website where you can track your progress, access interactive quizzes and lesson notes, and connect with our teachers and other learners like you. And if you'd like a more guided experience, we also offer live online boot camps with expert help. So join us at thegraphcourses.org to start your learning journey today.